actually did my application and that of my husband myself i did all this without an agent and our visas were approved in one month <laughs> hello welcome to today's video if you're joining me for the first time i'm so excited to have you here i welcome you all to today's video so today's video i'll be talking about how i got my canadian visa approved i actually did my application and that of my husband myself I did all this without an agent and our visas were approved in one month. <laughs> Before I go further, just a disclaimer, please, I am not a visa agent. So I'm going to share based on my experience, please, not as an agent. <laughs> so I'm going to be sharing from how I was able to get um, my NBA admission, um, biometrics, medicals, um, and also the documents I submitted for my application. So uh, I'm going to start with the client info. I've written down a lot of information down here so that um, I will not miss out anything. So I'm going to be checking my notes so I don't miss out some things. From my undergraduate days, I decided that I was going to do my master's outside Nigeria though I wasn't sure of the country yet, but I just knew I didn't want to further my studies in Nigeria. Um, so with all the ASO strikes, so many strikes in my universities, I actually attended a federal university. So there was a little delay um, in my graduation. Yeah, so when I was done with my undergraduate studies, I went for NYC. And um, when I was done with my NYC, I got married. That was um, last year. So after our wedding, um, after some months, after some months of settling down, I just um, I just thought about it and I was like, it's time to actually move, like it's time to actually leave the country. So I had a discussion with my husband that it's time we actually move, let me start my application, let me start research on how we can actually leave the country. And he gave, um, we both decided, okay, we can begin our plans already. So, and um, I checked about schools in the UK and I also checked um, in Canada too. And we both decided to settle with Canada. Yes, because of um, the ease of getting PR after um, spending some time in the country, after spending some years in the country. And um, so we decided to just go with Canada. A lot of um, things we thought about and we said, okay, Canada is the best option. Canada is the option we want to go with. Yes. So I said, looking for schools. You know how Canada is so big. There are several provinces and I didn't even know where to start from. So the first was to decide what I wanted to further in. I actually have an undergraduate degree in electrical and electronics engineering. And, and I was sure that I did not want to further in that course, yes, because um, I got involved in other things that are of interest to me. So at first I wanted to do a master's in business analytics for, after discussing with a senior friend of mine, she advised I go for a master's of business administration. Yeah, that's MBA. So the next step, but to start looking for schools in Canada offering MBA. Yes, I wanted a two years old where there's also internship. So I started looking for schools offering that. Um, and then finally, I was uh, finally I decided on my school because um, it was located in a town and province that my husband and I would like, both wanted to settle in. Yes, that's British Columbia. So I started researching on the town and um, schools in that area offering MBA. So I applied for my school. At the same time too, so I was also working on my SOP. Yes, uh, because you need an SOP to apply for graduate studies, like telling them why you want to do that course, especially for me that I was switching from an engineering course um, to do an MBA. I had to write my SOP, explaining why I wanted to do an MBA, talk about my work experience, different things, you know, just to convince them. Um, 
applying for graduate studies is kind of competitive and um, not really competitive but you need to also convince these people that you actually you know you have a good reason applying for this course and um, you are going to do well talk about your plans maybe um, according to your request I may do a special video um, addressing how to write your statement of purpose both for admission and uh, for visa application so at that point I still working on my SOP um, this, a senior friend of mine was um, actually reviewing it for me so if you have someone to actually review your statement of purpose you could have fine I'd ha I had her reviewing it and um, my husband was also reviewing it for me so when I was done with it I just casually applied to my school like you know when you just find a school like i was thinking oh the admission process is just going to be tough because <laughs> before i started applying i wrote several exams i wrote my gre and i wrote my tofel so i was thinking oh my school is going to need all of this so when i started the admission process and i saw ah i just like i just picked my laptop i didn't even really think about the school just applied for the school casually and guys in five days time I was sent a letter of admission um, I didn't go away on holiday then so I was like um, I've got an admission already so I browsed about the school I did a lot of research about the school and um, it's actually a good school so a private university so my husband and I decided to just go with that yes and um, I also checked their curriculum. It was kind of up to date. Um, there's something I wanted in their curriculum that I also found that is of interest to me. So I decided to go for the school. So after getting that admission, um, they requested I pay a tuition deposit of um, 7,800 Canadian dollars. So after paying that, I was given my letter of acceptance. It is that letter of acceptance that I can use to apply for my visa. So all of this was done last year, October. Yeah, that was when I got um, my admission October. So, and it was for the fall 2024 session I applied for. That's um, September this year. So I had a lot of time. And um, with the information I was seeing online, uh, like you should apply for admission, like, close to um not too close to your resumption but not like up to one year maybe less than one year before your school um resumption so and i thought about it i was like i would love to start let me give it a try because <laughs> with the information i was seeing online like canada they give people a lot of rejections so i was like okay since I have up to one year, let me start trying now. If they reject me, I will apply again. At least I have up to one year to keep trying and trying and trying. That was what I told myself. So I decided to try. I started gathering all our documents and all that is needed for the application. At first, I was thinking of um, should my, my husband should join me through open work permits. Do there are other ways of entering Canada. You can enter through... Um, the LMIA, that's um, Work Sponsored Visa, or I can, um, my husband can join me as a dependent on that spousal open work permit. I saw the advantage of having a spousal open work permit because you can work with any, my husband can work with any company he wants to work with, but under the Work Sponsored Visa, you have to work with them maybe to you get someone else to get another job to sponsor you or um so you get your PR. so i didn't want that kind of restriction so um people decided to go with this personal open work permit so that's how we started i said gathering documents and um i said learning um i said i joined groups i i, I watched um videos I got to know like how this thing works so when it's time for me to do my application it won't be hard for me so i started gathering all that documents i gathered all the documents and grouped them together i sorted them so that when it was time for me to start uploading the documents were already sorted 
So um, I created an application on the IRCC portal. Um, when I was done with that, I started filling the forms, filling the forms. Um, at the beginning, you're supposed to answer some questions to get your full application um, created. Yeah, so when I was done with that, I started, I uploaded that document. I'm going to be sharing the documents I uploaded under client info and under proof of funds because this is where a lot of persons have problems with. So I'm going to be sharing the documents I uploaded under my client info and also documents I uploaded under proof of funds. Yes. So for client info, I actually took down some notes here. So I'll be checking down so I won't forget any. For client info, um the first document was my statement of purpose that this is the document stating why i'm actually going for the course i'm going for that's one uh, why i'm actually doing going for an mba why i'm switching my course to an mba i spoke about my experience school experience community development experience work experience different kind of things you know just to let the visa officer know about you because for this application, for this Canadian visa application, there is no interview. Yeah, so your SOP gives the visa officer an idea of who you are, why you're entering Canada, why you picked Canada, why you picked your school. So my SOP contained all this information, my background story, at least the visa officer got to know about me, why I was speaking Canada, I wrote about how Canada is good, how it is a multicultural uh, country, several things I wrote because I did my research online here about Canada. Then I also wrote about why I was speaking that particular course. I linked it to my um, work experience. I also wrote about why I was speaking my school and several informations. Maybe I'll do a separate video on how to write an SOP later on. So I also wrote about my proof of funds too like who is going to sponsor my study in canada um just just write a lot about yourself yes and then i also uploaded my TOEFL result yes while i was preparing to start applying for schools i wrote an english proficiency exam i wrote TOEFL. yeah so i uploaded the results i also uploaded my resume yeah resume or cv I uploaded my death certificates also. Um, I also uploaded my letter of introduction from my place of work. Yes, this um, letter should contain when you started working there and um, maybe projects you've participated in, um, just your good conduct at work. Yeah. I also uploaded a letter of recommendation for my community development work. Um, I was actually involved in a lot of community development work back in Nigeria. So I um, I got a letter of recommendation for that, talking about the, in my, the impact of my work, um, projects are carried out, um, impact of my work on the community, just, just generally about um, my community development work. Yes. I also uploaded my NYSC certificate. Um, I also uploaded my NYC State Honors Award Certificate. Yes, um, after my NYC, I was given a State Honors Award for my community development service. So I just uploaded that. Um, I also uploaded my NYC FRSC Award. That's the, the CDS I was part of. I was given an award. Then so I also uploaded it. So in this client info, if you have certificates or awards from different places, just upload them. It should be part of your client's info. Like this is where the visa officer is going to go through to know about you. Yeah. So that's why I uploaded all these awards. I uploaded the recent ones. Yes. I also uploaded my transcript. That's my um, undergraduate and um, course transcript. I also uploaded my certificates. That's my BSc certificate. And then I uploaded my community development pictures. I didn't just talk about my community development in my um, SOP. I also uploaded pictures to prove that. So um, I actually merged all the pictures in a, in a grid. Yeah, so I uploaded them. I merged them together and um, I merged them together with the other documents and uploaded them. Um, I also uploaded my 
previous visas to the UK. Yes, so if you have travel experience to any country, even if it's Togo, even if it's Cameroon, yes, because when you're crossing the border, I'm sure they stamp all those things. So I uploaded my previous visas to um, UK. I think I also uploaded my um, stamps clearance to Togo too. So whatever travel experience you have, so far is not your country. Upload it. Yes. Um, I also uploaded pictures with my family. Um, pictures that I've taken with my family members, my siblings, um, my wedding pictures. Yeah, the pictures we took together on my wedding day. Um, just different pictures we took together. Casual pictures too. Like um, casual pictures we've taken when, uh, during visits and outings to just merge all of them together in a grid. I also uploaded birth certificate of my siblings and affidavit of name change for those that are married. I uploaded these documents because I wanted to show proof of family and home ties. Yes, it's good you actually show that. Um, so if you don't have um, the birth certificates of some of your siblings, you can just get the ones you already have. Um, though it's not compulsory, but it's going to help to actually show that you have home ties. And I also forgot to mention, in your SOP, you can actually have a session for family and home ties, talking about your family, yes. Um, so these are all the documents I submitted for my client's info. Up next, I'll be sharing on the documents I submitted under proof of funds, yes. So um, since my husband and I didn't have a long-term plan of traveling, like we got married last year and we just settled in like how many months we carried out a lot of projects and our accounts was not really enough with all the information i was seeing online they'll tell you build your account for six months keep on your account for six months and the rest and we just got married last year and we used several months to settle like do a lot of projects family projects and um our account was not and enough to show my complete um, school fees and also living expenses because I wanted us to have up to 30,000 Canadian dollars in our account, an equivalent of 30,000 Canadian dollars in our accounts before the application. So when I looked at the timeline, we're going to spend more time because that's what I was seeing online. Yes, that's what people were advising, advising you do and I did not want to wait that long. So I got to know that I can actually use another sponsor for my application. So I used um, my sister as one of my sponsors. So for my proof of fund, I actually had two sponsors. That's my sister and my husband. I used my sister's account to show as my sponsor for tuition and um, living expenses. And then I also used my husband as my second sponsor for living expenses. So I explained all of this in my application. So um, so the list of contents was sponsor one for tuition and living expenses, which is my sister, and then sponsor two for living expenses, which is my husband. And then I also, I also shared on my personal finance, yes. So all of these, that's the three of them combined, was what I used for my proof of funds, yes. So for my sponsor one, which is my sister, these are the list of documents I submitted for her. So number one, letter of sponsorship. In this letter, um, it stated, she stated how I related, how I'm dead to her. Let me talk, but in summary, just talk about how she's willing to sponsor me and, um, also declare her what's her assets yes what she has in her account how uh, she spoke about where she's living her work and everything yes so if you have a sponsor this is where your sponsor is going to talk about why he's sponsoring you if he or she have done other things for you the person can talk about um what they have done for you before how um how you are a nice, you are a great person. How you guys are related? Just, just to, uh, and then also mention 
um, the amounts they've set aside for sponsorship. Yes. Um, I also uploaded a declaration of support from her. Just, oh, I am so so and so. Um, and I will be sponsoring this person. Attached to this application are my documents. You list um, all the documents the person is um, to attach to your application. Yes. But maybe I'll explain that in another video. I'll explain that more in another video. Or if you have questions about this, just ask in the comment section and I'll be able to answer. Yeah. I also uploaded the data page of her international passports. I uploaded her birth certificates. Yes, to show that we're actually related and to show that we're actually siblings. Um, I uploaded her marriage certificate um, and affidavit of name change. It's just to show that, oh, her new name is because she was married and um, that affidavit of name change um, showed the proof that um, she actually changed her name. And then receipts of my tuition deposit. When I wanted to pay my tuition deposit down to pay, I actually sent the money into her account to help me pay. So she, I also added the receipt of my tuition deposit. I also uploaded statement of account of her savings and salary account. Yes. I also uploaded her work ID. And then lastly, I uploaded pictures I took with her to show proof of relationship. Yes. Because, um, you can't just um, carry someone like that and say the person is sponsoring you. All this is just to prove that we are actually connected. You can actually use a sponsor that is not a family member, but you just have to upload different things to show that you are actually connected and kind of related to, not related by blood, or at least to show proof of connection between you two. Yes, yeah, so for me, I used pictures to prove that pictures we took together yes um, coming to my second sponsor which is my husband for my living expenses yeah so I uploaded a letter of sponsorship from him too um, stating where he work his details how he, um, we are married when we got married and why he's willing to sponsor my living expenses yeah, so any letter of sponsorship you have, the patient should also state why he or she is willing to sponsor you. For my sister's letter of sponsorship, she stated why she was willing to sponsor me. And then for my husband's one, he also stated why he was willing to sponsor me too. I also uploaded his international passport, a marriage certificate, a bit of name change. That's all this is to show proof that I'm actually married and I changed my son name to his name um if you've not changed your name yet it's not compulsory to have all of this you can actually use the current son name you have um i also uploaded pictures we took together that's pictures we took alone um special moments casual moments just gather all of these pictures and um arrange them in a grid and then merge them together with the other documents i also uploaded his employment later i uploaded his invoice from work i also uploaded six months um, statement of his naira accounts and usd accounts that has to show inflow and outflow of um of um, money um, i also did that for my sister too, too i also you remember i mentioned that i uploaded her salary account to to show that there's inflow and outflow of money yes um i also uploaded letter of introduction from work that's um for my husband i uploaded a letter of introduction from church for him too because he was very active in his church in our church so i uploaded a little introduction from church for him all this letter of introduction is just to vouch for a person's character and know that oh this person is good so gather any kind of letter of introduction whether it's for community development services whether it's from church or workplace just just gather enough of that and then i also uploaded his pension details and then i uploaded his um car documents so all of these documents i merged them together yes 
and then I also mentioned that I showed my own personal finance yes so um, during that period my account was kind of empty yes because um, I think I did a project that time so my account was empty and I didn't want to leave my account out I wanted to also show personal finance so I asked my husband to send um, I think 500k into my account yes the money just stayed for two days you know when they'll tell you keep your accounts keep money in your accounts for like six months uh, okay maybe three months before you actually print it but i was about submitting it and submitting my application so i just told my husband to send me this amount so my account is not going to be empty so he sent me 500k so what i did is that i explained the lump sum yes under my personal finance i explained there was an explanation of lump sum here where I explained, oh, this money is coming from my husband as support for my living expenses. Yes. Even in my husband's later support, he also mentioned that he has sent so and so amount to my account as support for my living expenses. So it mustn't be 500k, it mustn't, you can give less than, you can have less than that. Yeah. Oh, um, let me mention briefly for the other family that I did the application for them and it was approved in one week um, it was more than 500k that was sent into the account so anytime you have a lump sum in your account whether it has stayed for one day or two days just explain where it's coming from so far where it's coming from makes sense hey good and fine it doesn't matter how long money has stayed in your account yeah so I also submitted a statement of account for my savings account yes so and then I also submitted my car papers yes so all these documents that spawn from my sponsor one which is my sister from my sponsor two which is my husband and my own personal finance I merged all these documents together yes I, I sectioned them and merged them all together maybe when I'm doing a video on how to uh, maybe a demo on how to um, fill forms and upload documents I can show you how to do that but I merged all these documents together I use the I love PDF um, tool you can google it yes you can google uh, applications you can actually use to merge documents together and um, when you're uploading all these documents you can for the old portal you can only upload a maximum of 4 MB so imagine you combining all these documents is actually more than 4 MB so what I did was that I merged and compressed them till I was able to get I think almost 4 MB yeah, but less than 4 MB because you're not supposed to exceed 4 MB. So that's what I did. I merged all this. I compressed them to good quality because some of the documents, if you compress them to a low quality, you will not be able to see them clearly. So um, I merged them to a good quality. I compressed them to a good quality and then merged all of them together. Yeah, and uploaded these documents under my proof of funds. So when I was done with uploading all the documents, I submitted the application and um, paid the application fee. And then after that, when we were sent the biometrics um, request later, we booked for our biometrics in um, Abuja. Yes. So and then at the same time, I also booked for our medicals, so that when we get to Abuja, since we don't stay in Abuja. We'll be able to do our biometrics and also do our medicals so when we went for our biometrics i think the next day or so we did our medicals so and um we didn't wait for ircc to request for our medicals first before we did it so it was like we did an upfront medicals yes so you can actually do an upfront medical before submitting your application. Just know that it's valid for three months before you submit your application, yeah. So when we're done with all these, doing our biometrics and um, doing our medicals, since I had already submitted our application um, before doing our medicals, I, I sent our medicals um, results. That's when it was out through the web form to IRCC 
so that they can attach it to our application. And when it was sent to them, they approved our medicals. We passed, they passed our medicals and our application. So when we're done with all that, we're now waiting for our application to be approved then. <laughs> yeah, so we actually did our application in December, first week of December. Um, I can I think I remember my biometrics of first of December. So after the Christmas and the um, New Year holiday, we were still in the UK on holiday then. So and I got I received the mail saying that our application had been updated. I opened it, lo and behold, it was password request. I was so happy that day. Guys, you won't understand because I jokingly like I just applied for this thinking, oh if i receive um if we receive rejection is to apply again now in fact there are some documents i forgot to add to my application so <laughs> it was really like it was surprising and um, wonderful to see that we actually uh, our visa has actually got approved and then when they when they actually send a passport request um, later to you you have to send your passport to any um, VFS um, center to submit your applic your passport so that they can stamp it. So we did all of that, and then I, I was just waiting till when they stamp our visas and then they bring back our passport for me to see <laughs> to see it. <laughs> so like when I said, I was like, ah, this thing was actually approved. So it's actually kind of um, it's not too difficult. Once you start the process on time, just make sure you sort and arrange your documents well. Yes, and um, give your best. Yes, though I was trying, it was a trial for me, but I actually gave my best. Yes, yes, I didn't just casually apply, I actually gave my best. So I would advise you to do that. <laughs> That's it. Just make sure you have a good application. In my next video, I'll be sharing on the documents I submitted for my husband's spousal open work permit. If you have questions about the study visa application, do let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer and address all your questions. I hope you enjoyed today's video. <laughs> please, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do also like and share my videos. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!